welcome to another session of the Skull Sessions podcast with Dan Hink. And today my guest is Meryl David. Is it how I said? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about you. What, what are you up to? Like, I just did your convention in Dallas, and that was awesome. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me on, on the show. I love your the show. Um, and yeah, it was cool to, to meet you at the Texas Authorconist uh, back in July. Uh, that was really cool. I was, I was, uh, I was really uh, happy and surprised that I had people like you coming as far away as you did. So, I mean, I know you came from your way around the East Coast, right? Where are, you, are you Virginia? New, New York. <laughs> New York. So, so, yeah. So, Rebecca Rowland came from Boston. We had uh, uh, Jason came from West Virginia. Uh, we had uh, um, Montana. Um, so, we had people from all over the place so i was really really happy about that and uh and and taking quite uh back by it but i mean it was awesome so uh i think the event went well uh it was only our second one ever uh the one before that we only had 14 authors out of the thing so this 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 last one that we just had we had uh 60 so it was wow. a big jump yeah. yeah so a big jump and then uh it went it went very well and next year, I think we're going to add like another five tables. We're not going to go crazy with this thing, but we're going to grow a little bit. But I'm excited about uh, about uh, next year and then uh, the future of, of the of the event, man. Uh, and you're going to join us again next year, right? No, oh, definitely. Yeah. No, like I said, it was uh, it was a good time. Um, the next year, like, was this year a higher attendance than the first year? Oh yeah, by far. But we, I mean, we expected it. We had a lot more. We had a lot more authors. We advertised it a lot more. We promoted it a lot more, a lot longer. So we we were anticipating that the crowd would be a lot higher. And I I expect the same thing next year. We're going to advertise it uh, even more than we did this past one. And and I think between that and and word of mouth, I think uh, this thing is going to grow to be a pretty pretty huge uh, event within the next couple years. Like I said, for our second year. I was very happy with the, the, the turnout and the way it all went down, you know? Yeah, no, it was cool. I, I enjoyed it, everybody, you know, especially if you're an author. I think it's a good thing to attend. And, you know, I, I met, like, a Chantel and Dicey. I, I've only talked to them, but I met them in person. And they were awesome. We hung out all weekend. Um, yeah. So uh, give it a shout-out to help people can see your site. Uh, it's just, uh, she don't know it offhand. It's, uh, we, we do most of our, our business on, on our Facebook group. We've got a Facebook group, Texas Author Con and Book Festival. And so we used to be just called the Texas Author Con. There was some confusion out there. Kind of like you said, I think a lot of people thought that this was just an event just for authors and they didn't realize that, no, this is open to everybody. This is open for, open to readers and, and, uh, so that's kind of why we added that onto the name of it, to the Ann Book Festival. So, um, so Friday, I think we're aiming more for, uh, Friday, we're going to have some, uh, rather than, uh, rather than group discussions aimed towards the readers, I think on our Friday evening, we'll kind of do more like author oriented topics maybe some training uh sessions in there and then saturday and we'll still have we'll still be open to the readers on friday night and for sales and where they can meet uh authors and all that but saturday is the real big day where we're going to be holding our um discussions in the in the, the little side room there and our panels and all that stuff and that's um so yeah so this is an event for for one and all it's not just for authors but uh, shoot, I forget what the question was. I kind of got sidetracked. <laughs> um, All right. Well, uh, I was just asking, you know, I mean, it's obviously going to be bigger and better this year, you know, than you know, last year and bigger and better than it was the year before. Um, right. I've noticed, like, there are kind of two different kind of conventions. There are horror conventions, the, the ones that are kind of, like, for the general public, like Monster Mania, where they, like, people sell a whole bunch of, like, action figures, and stuff like that. And you have a few authors there, but you also have like some like B movie celebrities and stuff. You know, and then there are things like Killer Con or Author Con. And, and they're more, you know, focused on the authors and the people that come to them are not in like fans come to them, but it, it's especially a lot of people that are like, 
want to be future authors or current authors and they want to be some of their heroes and get some advice. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this event is more like one of those. This is not your, and not, nothing against those events, but there's a, over in Irving, Texas, not far from, from our event is, a, is Fright Mayor, Fright Mayor's weekend uh, in Fort Worth, I believe, or Irving. And so that's um, that's a completely different event. That's a, that's a horror event, and that does include a lot of film, a lot of the, like you said, the B the B type celebrities. They may have the the um, the uh, what were the guys? What were the the different dudes that wore the different colors? And they were like the ninja guys back in the day, Power Rangers. Oh yeah, they, <laughs> the ninja guys. <laughs> they, they, you know, I heard over the last year, you know, somebody advertising that they're going to have the Pink Power Ranger. That's not our event. We are authors and we are readers, and that's that's what we do. I mean, we had a couple guys that were authors, but we also also sold some of the you know the the figurines and stuff on the side. But they're primarily our uh, our authors, and they're there uh, selling their books, and they're there to meet their readers and autograph and take pictures with their fans and stuff like that. So that's really what what that what, what our, our event is about. You're not gonna have the TV Ninja Turtles there, maybe with like Shredder. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love the turtles, but no, not, <laughs> they won't be at our event. No, maybe Spawn is a little bit more horror. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, so let's talk about you. What have you done, and what kind of led you up to this point? Um, you know, I, I still consider myself brand brand new uh, to the whole writing thing. I mean, I started. Uh, I put I put my first book out in twenty, and that took me like five years to do that. But that's just because I was just right. I was basically writing on a dare from my my wife. She dared me to write a zombie book because I was always. Complaining about The Walking Dead and how this was fake and that was fake, and she said, "Why don't you write a damn book then? If you're so smart about zombies." So that's when I just I just started kind of messing around, uh, putting stuff on paper. Never never thought that I would actually publish that just, thing. And just interrupt you for one minute. Um, so we did a, a panel at one of the art conventions. Then we're talking about how fake stuff like The Walking Dead is. <laughs> you're like, dude. Gasoline to crazy cars. You can have a car sitting there for like 10 years and then you just jump in and drive away. Oh, yeah. Start. We'll take gas and all kinds of tons of weapons already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and don't get me wrong, I love I loved the first few uh, ep, uh, seasons of Walking Dead. I mean, that was my favorite show, but uh, that doesn't mean that a lot of that stuff just wouldn't happen in real life, like you said. But, um, so that's how my whole my whole writing journey started. I never thought I'd actually publish that thing. Uh, my wife passed, and um, I and and like you, I, I read your bio. So did you have a, a brain tumor? Yeah, I, I had a brain tumor. I was in a Bellevue Hospital. Um, I had surgery, I had chemo, I had radiation. Uh, my girlfriend at the time became my wife, and she got an end run. So it's, it's all a trail of sorrow. So. Yeah, I, I was reading your bio, man. I was like, dang. Uh, but what we have in common there is that. So I had a brain tumor also. So mine was mine was um, was malignant. So mine, so yeah. Okay, but uh, so so between and that that happened back to back between my my wife uh, passing and then my brain tumor. So basically, for two years there, I basically put the book on uh, um, in the in the drawer, put it away, and didn't mess with it at all. And then uh, just probably about 2000, maybe 19, um, I pulled that thing back out again and finished it up. And so in 20, right as, as the whole pandemic was was starting up, is when I released uh, Wicked Awake. And that was my first book in my zombie series. Um, I've since released uh, four of those. And I'm going to finish the series out next year, probably, probably going to come out in June. Uh, with Wicked Away 5, uh, Happy Endings Cost Extra. And that'll be it. I'll be done with that uh, that series. And now I'm kind of more doing the the more filthier, kind of more splattery extreme stuff. And that's kind of what I'm interested in. Would it be more splatterpunk or more extreme horror? A little bit of both. I mean, I'm kind of... I, 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 I don't know really what, I, what genre I fall into, what category I fall into. Like, I... Like, I'm kind of mixing stuff up. Like, uh, so my first venture outside of the zombies was, was Fester. And so that's kind of a sci-fi, coming-of-age, cosmic 
uh, hard, but it's kind of splattery. It's kind of gross too. So I mean, I don't know what you call that thing, but it's, I just kind of combine all. Uh, maybe it's like hash. It's like horror hash. You know, I just kind of throw a bunch of stuff together and see if it works. So. That's, That's kind of what I'm doing, but I don't have. Well, if it, if it works, it works. I mean, yeah, it, like people shouldn't follow the formula. Like people who follow the formula, you know, die out pretty quick. So no, I, I think that's a uh, that's a good idea. Are you doing more of that as you go along, like with your further books, or like yeah, I'll include more. Uh, like you know, like I I noticed it myself. Like the further books I write, like the I think the better, more fluid I get, and like I, I kind of figure out what elements you know ring better. Yeah, exactly. I, I definitely feel like I'm, I write so much better now than when I started started this whole process. And um, but yeah, I think my stuff is 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 um, it's, it's starting to get so it's even starting to get. I don't know if, if I haven't, I haven't really gotten into the Bizarro yet, but I'm kind of thinking maybe that may be some place that I go in the near future as well. But I'm just writing some really, really weird stuff. Uh, uh, so I, I did Season Past. That was my second book out outside of the zombies. And that's kind of a mix between the paranormal and it's kind of extra filthy. So I guess that's kind of splattery too. Uh, and extreme. And then, uh, but it's... Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of it's kind of, it's hard to exactly categorize it, but uh, the one I'm working on now is kind of a crime story, mafia crime story, but it's also filthy and borderline splatterpunk or extreme too. I call that one. Uh, it's gonna be lasagna. That's gonna come out in December. Does it have any um, supernatural elements in it, or like you know, like uh, mysticism or cult? No, no, I haven't done anything like that, like that yet. But uh, I eventually someday I want to. I, I got a bunch, I got a whole uh, ton of Google Docs where I've kind of started ideas or titles, and then maybe someday I'll get to them. Uh, but eventually I would like to do something like that. I would. I really want to do something with the cryptids. Uh, there, there's a whole bunch of different things I would like. Like I said, maybe some Bizarro. Uh, so I haven't done any slasher yet, so I don't know. Maybe I'll just take a shot at each one of those things and see which one does the best for me. But I'm just, I'm really, I'm really. This is a hobby for me. I'm not. Uh, this is not. This is not a business. I'm just having a good time doing this, and I never thought that I would even be here to where people would actually, you know, pay or uh, pick up my books off Kindle Unlimited and actually want to read that crap, you know. But I mean, it's it's here, and I'm having a blast with it. I'm. I'm I'm happy. I'm exact, exact, uh, extremely happy and blessed that I'm even here in this position. So, yeah. I think there's still the really chance that a test time is more labor of love than like a money making venture. Um, like, I, I noticed like H.P. Lovecraft, one of my favorites, you know, he loved writing. He made no money. He died broke. Like, you know, he died of cancer and it was four months before he went to the hospital to get checked out because he was so poor. You know, yeah, a girl and Poe like died in the gutter. You know, they they just loved it so much. It, it seemed like and, and like uh, I don't know if you are familiar with Robert Chamberlain. He wrote the uh, King of Yellow, the Yellow Sign. You know, mm -hmm. um, so he started and he inspired Lovecraft. He wrote some like awesome horror stuff, and you know, I got his book called the Yellow Sign. You know, and, and the first like I think five or six stories. Are all kind of awesome horror stuff, but horror didn't really sell at that time. So all the rest are like romance, and it's very like 1920s romance. So it's like really stiff and awkward, or whatever. Like you, you can tell that he like he was really good at something, and he just gave up because I got to make money. But yeah. what people remember him for is like the first six stories. That's yeah. I mean, and this you're exactly right. I mean, this this is. It. I don't. I don't think anybody gets into writing uh, thinking that they're going to do it as a as a living or to become rich off of it. It's, it's got to be a labor of love, and if you're just put, pumping stuff out just to be making. I mean, I guess some people are talented enough where they can do that, but um, I can tell. I can tell when I, and that's why a lot of times I've been on these podcasts and people ask if I have if I use a word count, and I never use a word count because. I, I just try to just write while I'm having fun. So there'll be days where 
I'm just not feeling it. And and I tell myself, okay, I'm not going to just put stuff down. I got my big cat's about to jump on my lap. Yeah. Um, I don't, and, he, and I gotta watch him because he's got sharp claws, and if I don't help him, scratch it, fuck out of my leg, right, buddy? Um, so, uh, so I, I just gotta be, I just gotta be writing, I gotta be having fun, but I'll never tell myself, okay, today I'm gonna write a thousand five hundred words because, because, because a couple times I've done that, a couple times I'm like, okay, let me just, let me just try to finish this chapter out, and then the following day, I'll look at it and I'll be like, what? It just kind of sucks. I mean, it just kind of feels vanilla. It doesn't feel like I was actually feeling any of it, you know? So I just I erase it and just start on the side. That's, maybe that's just me. No, I agree with you. I mean, I'll be working on something, and it could be like an hour. It could be like six hours, you know? But once I hit a roadblock, and I feel like I kind of like don't know how I want to progress, I don't want to force it. So then, then I'll go out and do something else. Often I'll like go for a bike ride or something because that like burst of endorphins really helps you think. You know, yeah. especially if I'm like at, at a point like I'm, I'm reading a novel and I'm like at, at like one point with the main character needs to do something, but I'm not sure exactly how that person should proceed. I go, you know what? If I take a break and I think about it while I'm doing other activity, I'll come up with something great. And I often do. And the other thing I do that you do is um, I, I write notes all the time. Like on my iPhone, I have a whole section of notes. And someone will even say, for the new novel. But then I won't use all of them because I'll be like, they don't all go together. So this would be great for a short story. This would be great for the novel. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I do. I'll, uh, sometimes if I'm driving, I'll use my phone and the, the, you know, the audio recorder and I'll leave voice notes and stuff. But if I'm yeah, if I'm if I'm still, then I'll put notes in the in the phone or I'll jump on the Google Doc. But I'm the same way. I just uh, and I'm with you. I a lot of times I do get ideas. I kind of like get ideas if I'm on like a long road trip. Um, or the other the other place where I get a lot of a lot of good ideas, and this may sound kind of weird, but a lot of times I get good ideas when I'm sitting in church. You know, I go to church I, uh, and I'll be in there for some reason. I'm trying to pay attention, but sometimes I'll be start. I'll be thinking of like you know new storylines or things that I can already plug into my uh, current works. I mean, it's, it's weird. I get a lot of good good uh, good ideas and thoughts in church for some reason. I don't know why that is. Uh, I, I have a problem because I go to church and it's bursting into flames, so I, I can't walk into church. <laughs> but uh, that's my running joke. Um, so. <laughs> You started fairly recently. Do you have them all up on Amazon? Do you have a website? Like, you know, how do you how do you promote them, and how do you get people to buy them? Yeah, it's all on Amazon. It's all on Kindle Unlimited. It's all on uh, wherever you can find Audible books. I've got the Audible version for all of them. So wherever you find that, but. I don't do a website. I got a website, but no, it's not a good one. It's like nobody uses it. <laughs> I'm not a tech guy, and so I know that a lot of people don't call that tech, but yeah, I can't even do the website thing. I just, I'm on Amazon. If people uh, want a signed book, all they got to do is reach out and message me, and I'll send them a side book, but I keep it simple, man. I'm on Amazon. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I, I tried the ticket talk machine, and I, didn't, I wasn't doing very well there. I guess I didn't dance well enough or something. Yeah, so you, sure. were, you were wearing those, those pink fringe dresses. If you were, then you'd be fine. I, I couldn't find it in my eyes. I looked all over. Uh, yeah, so I uh, I uh, so I, I keep it simple, man. But yeah, it's all on Amazon. It's all on Kindle Unlimited, and it's all on Audible. So um, yeah, it's all out there. But if anybody wants to uh, reach out to me, get a signed copy, just uh, message me, and I'm I'm always up for sending something out like that. Okay. Do you have an author page on Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of see what do you have a blog? No, I don't do blogs. <laughs> so all right, if you want to get a hold of you, if they want a signed copy or whatever, should they just shoot you an email? They can email me at uh Merrill David Hart at gmail.com. Uh but the easiest way is just you know, uh, friend me on Facebook. And uh, send me a message on the messenger machine there. I'll, uh, I'll get back with you. That's, that's the easiest way. That's where I get most people reaching out to me and stuff. But, uh, 
Yeah, I'll just keep it simple like that. Or come out there, even better, come out to the Texas Octagon and meet me, <laughs> meet Ken, meet, uh, meet Patrick Harrison, Chris Miller, uh, Ed Bach, I mean, meet uh, Eric Butler, come out to Texas Octagon and meet us all there. That's the best way to do it. You can see a whole bunch of us all in one shot. Yeah, I recommend it. Yes. I'm going to be there. I'm going to have to be in the same time it was last time. He's uh, in my new book, my uh, anthology book. He's a nice guy. So, um, all right, so what got you started in the whole convention thing? Like, you, you were you writing, and then you were like, I'm going to start doing conventions and, like, get out there more and get, like, a, like a wider expanse of knowledge? Or what, what was your process? Yeah, me and uh, me and Jamie Hernandez, she writes uh, zombie uh, fiction as well. And so we were in the we were in the same uh, Facebook group, uh, Written Undead, and so we we're and she's in Dallas as well. So we we're talking about, hey, it'd be kind of cool if we you know maybe had a book signing event somewhere. So it started out with the two of us. She uh, she was Facebook friends with. Um, Nick Sten Stenchek, who writes fantasy, and so we kind of added him onto it. And next thing you know, um, we came up with a couple other people, and it grew. We, we never thought it would grow to 14, and so the first year we had 14 people, and now, like I said, now we're up to 60. So that's how it all started. Uh, we just wanted to get uh, we just wanted a chance to get some exposure, get our name out there, be able to meet, meet our readers, them, them have the chance to meet us. and and Jamie's readers kind of kind of come and, and see my stuff, and my readers come check her stuff out. Same with Nick. You know, a lot of, I think a lot of readers don't just read one genre. They, they uh, read multiples. And so we're just trying to get out there and be seen and heard, and, uh, and hopefully people uh, people kind of like our stuff and maybe word spreads, and uh, and we get to see more and more people and more and more readers down the road. That's kind of what the, the thought process was behind our, our starting this thing. I did um start it way back in like 2013, I believe. <clears throat> and you know, my first novel was all headed out at the time and has a kind of sci-fi cover to it, but started as a horror commission. So people bought it and they said, Hey, I'm glad I bought this because I never would have bought it if I thought it was just sci-fi. So yeah, conventions are great because they, they like you get to talk to the authors, you get to go, hey, what's it about? You get to go. You know, it, like that that organic conversation, I think, is a lot better than like stiff type on the back of the book. It, it really, yeah, it really is. I mean, and and, and like you said, so many, uh, so many readers. I mean, they they don't just read just one thing, or if they do, you know, they're interested in other things, but maybe they hadn't, they just hadn't, you know, pursued any any uh, literature uh, in that genre yet. But I mean, like it, like I think a good example is is. Um, is Western horror, you know? So I think that's starting to become more and more popular. And so that's kind of, it's kind of a blend between two, two very different, you know, genres between the Western and, and horror. And we're starting to see those come oh, together. When it's well done, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely I mean, is. I think it's depleted like zombies. <laughs> like every, like <clears throat> there were a couple of awesome zombie things. Like uh, I loved Dawn of the Dead. This is one of my favorite movies ever. But then there were so many knockoffs in Dawn of the Dead, like Zombie Lake or Shockwaves. And after a while, you're just like, all right, man, give up on the zombie shit. Unless, unless you got something new and original to say, just give up on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you can only do zombies so many different ways. I mean, I, and then maybe, and like I said, I still love zombies, and I was starting to, to kind of... Uh, 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 invent some different different things with with uh, in my series, and I was starting to do some some uh, different takes on on the whole the whole spread of the virus and the pandemic and all that. And some different creatures that were becoming uh, affected by the, the virus, and you were seeing you know morphed. Uh, 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 I don't know if they're creatures, but things you know, part zombie, part animal, part so you know. You can do a little bit with it, but eventually, yeah, you do get tired of just seeing zombies and different zombies on, on the zombies in Uranus and stuff like that. I mean, there's always something. Hey, that would hurt, by the way, I'm a zombie in Uranus. I think, <laughs> I, I think that the, um, 
the new takes on stuff with like the evolution and everything. I think that's what keeps it interesting because it seems like, especially I remember after Dawn of the Dead, you know, all these people were putting out movies were the exact same thing, let's put it in a different place. You know, yeah. so, so you just see any evolution, like, like I can still to this day, I don't care. Like, I've seen way too many zombie movies, but I still watch like 30 Days of Night. You know, like there, there are, you know, or 20 days later, you know, all the people argue with this is zombie or virus movie. But I'm just saying, like, it, as long as you have like a cool original take, you know, that you know, it doesn't matter if it's been done before. It, this is a new thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's funny that you mentioned 30 days because that that may be my my favorite horror movie of all time i mean i i mean i love that movie i know uh it's it's, it's a little bit of, uh aged and uh like i said some people some people are like well those aren't really um some people think they're vampires some people think well i don't know if they're vampires or not but I don't, whatever those creatures were, they were creepy as fuck, and that movie was really good. I love that movie. Yeah, and they, they go, melt genres up. Like, I mean, it's funny, it's not a zombie movie, it's a vampire movie, but like, how many times have people done vampires? But it doesn't matter if you do something new and original and cool with it, like 30 Days of Night, you do something horrible like fucking Twilight, you know? <laughs> it's like, that doesn't ruin vampires, it just ruins, you know, that take on vampires. Yeah, no, I'm exactly. You know, I can still get going. I'm, I was, I was crossing the genres between the, the vampires and the zombies. But going back to zombie films, I mean, I could watch Night of the Living Dead. Uh, I could probably watch that one every every two or three months. I mean, and, and as old as that one is, that, and that I don't know if that's the original. It's one of the originals. I still love that movie to this day. And more paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I tattoo, like, you know, there's like that zombie corpse, it's like half of the girl. She's like, the pain, the pain. They're like, you know, the first thing she's like, yes. And they're like, what makes pain noise? She's like, brains. I do that all the time when I tattoo. You know, people say something, they're like, the pain, the pain. Oh, man. That's funny. All right, man. So, um, I have a few more questions for you. Um, is all your stuff self-published? Is it do you start a company to put it out? Um, like how, how would people see it and what what's uh, the best way? Yeah, it's all it's all self-published. Um, and I actually I started to I didn't mention I mean I started to to publish my own. I mean, in addition to my my own books, I'm starting to publish uh, some anthologies. Uh, I already put out one. It's called uh, Head Blown. It's extreme body horror stories. And uh, part two is coming out. Uh, is, that, is that the one I'm going to do a story for? Yes, sir. And so, um, so, I'm, so I'm starting to, I figured, you know, if, uh, you know, I, I did the same thing as, as, as a lot of the, the authors when you're starting out. You know, you send all those queries out to all these publishers and you're emailing them and you're sending them all these uh, manuscripts and all that stuff, and, and I feel like I did that for a little while, and, uh, and after after a while, and I started to hear about self-publishing, and I was like, yeah, that sounds like the way to go, because I'm wasting a lot of fucking time going back and forth with these publishers or sending shit to them and not even hearing back. Fuck them. I'm going to do this myself. I, I think that you went the right way. Like, I, I was convinced the same thing. I was like, that you got to have a traditional publisher, and I had some horrible traditional publishers and so i incorporated and now i'm like just now putting out you know my other stuff but like you have so much more control like this anthology is the first thing i like i incorporated it's called dead guy lc and you know the first thing i put out through dead guy lc was this anthology but like i was able to do it like in hardcover and audio and all this stuff and i had all the rights to everything and I remember my last publisher, not my last publisher, the last publisher is actually really good, but the one before that, like, I just wanted all the copies so I wanted to sell some at, like, KillerCon, because I, I sold out your convention, and then I would sell some at KillerCon, they're like, yeah, we'll sell them to you for $12 a book. Like, $12, they're my own fucking book! You sell me for $12 a book? But I was like, just, just give me my rights back. <laughs> so, long story short, I think you, you went the right way. I don't need somebody telling me, 
you know, what cover to put on there, how to change the ending. I don't, I don't want any of that. So I, I, I'm with you. I mean, I, I've heard, so between your horror stories and I've heard a lot of uh, other authors with their horror stories and their dealings with publishers, and I'm just, I think there's, that's a trend now. A lot of people, as soon as they can, they're taking their stuff back from them and either they're republishing it on their own or they're, they're, they're doing whatever they can to get the rights back because you're right. I mean, it's not cool to have someone else having control over your properties and your work. Right. No, they, they were like, the, the publisher had my first two books, you know, they, they, they kind of violating the contract, but they try and like angle in different ways that are cheating me and what they're paying me. And they went through like three different owners. And I remember when I wanted to get out, you know, I was trying and I asked Jeff Strand, he gave me some great advice. So pretty much I feel like I just got kind of like nasty with them. Like, I want to write back. I want to right now. You know? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you misunderstood it. Here they are. <laughs> so yeah. they are, you know. Very nice, yeah. Yeah, I would I would um, highly recommend anybody who's just starting out, you know. I you know, I think I, I don't know I don't know how because I've never seen any self published works that were, were complete shit. But you hear you hear stories that there are a couple, you know, that there's some some people self published and their stuff was it was just awful, full of errors and I've never seen anything like that. But so I don't know if that's kinda of why some well, people word of mouth too. You know, like reviews really help. You know, people will call you out right away if they don't like something. Like even if they're just making you care about it, they'll call you out right away. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's true. So, um, so I don't know. I don't, for some reason, some people have, have given a self uh, publisher a bad rap. But I'm with you. Anyone starting this this out, starting out a brand new uh, journey, writing. Definitely look into self publishing. I mean, you know, throw it out there a little bit if you want to, to see if you can uh, latch on to a publisher. Do your research on the publishers first, like you were just saying, Dan. Make sure it's it's a it's a it's an uh, organization that you don't mind getting uh, wrapped up in with. But uh, definitely think consider self publishing. Don't waste a ton of time trying to get it hooked up uh, with the publisher. I mean, just just do it yourself. Okay. Awesome. So, um, do you have anything else that you want me to mention? Anything else that you want me to promote for you? Uh, other than your mission, that everybody should go to. Uh, I don't think so, man. Like, like I said, I talked about all the stuff I've got out. We talked about Texas Author Con. The, the the tickets for Texas Author Con are, are free. It's a free event. I know it's not until next July. Uh, so it's kind of early to talk about that, but uh, the tickets are free. They're on eventbrite.com. You can get free tickets there. Uh, the the cool thing about the event too, and you'll you'll see Dan because you're going to be in head blown too. Is we sell uh, we sell that anthology uh, at the event, so you can get the anthology head blown too. It's the extreme body horror stories at the event, and then. Probably 13 or 14 of the authors who have stories in that book will actually be at Texas AuthorCon. So you go around, you get Dan Hank to sign his story, me, Patrick Harrison, Rebecca Rowland, uh, all these excellent authors, and um, get them to sign it. So it's kind of like a treasure hunt. You know, you go around from one table to the next to get these these uh, uh, autographs, and it's, it's just kind of a cool thing. I think a lot of people have done that, but... Uh, so that, that Texas Comic-Con is in Dallas in July of 2024. Uh, that's about it, man. All my stuff, like I said, it's all on Amazon. It's all on Audible. Uh, Lasagna is coming out in December. Headblown 2 is coming out early next year. Uh, Wicked Awake 5, the, the finale to my zombie series will be out like in June. And uh, that's about it, man. I just uh, I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for talking about your shit. And uh, everybody should check his stuff out, and they should check out all the fun. All right, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Have a great day.